<laughs> oh god, that belt. She it feels flipping high. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever applies to you. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Julia. I'm a contemporary singing specialist based in Australia. And today I am finally returning to the wonderful music of Nightwish. We are going to be checking out Romanticide. So let's get into it. while since I've listened to Floor and every time I listen to her it's not just the stamina for what she does that gets me it's the ease at which she will go from something that energy wise has let's say a more intimate intensity to it so when she's singing some of the phrases that have more of a speech-like approach to it she becomes a little bit more twangy and then she absolutely kicks it in the gut for this belt up. It is that switch of energy. It just, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. She starts off with something that is lighter mass wise. She's in the second register at the beginning. It sounds like a modified classical setup. We've discussed this before. Floor's ability to move between something that is more of a legit musical theater sound. So legit within the musical theater realm means modified classical. And there's two different kinds of legit musical theater, but that's not what we're talking about here. She will switch between something that is more of a modified classical sound into something that is so, so contemporary. And the biggest difference is the amount of mass as well as the tone that she uses when she goes between these two sections. So we're back here with our very first, I guess, vocal idea. So the tone here, completely different to what she actually moves into. It's a little bit lighter mass wise. Funnily enough, where she is here in the beginning, that same strength of her uh, cracothyroid muscle, which is the muscle that allows the vocal folds to lengthen and become thin enough to give her that kind of tone is the exact same muscle that she would have to use and have in perfect balance with what we call the TA muscle or the thyroid muscle. This creates shorter and fatter vocal folds that gives us kind of like our mass sound. The coordination between those two muscles, CT and TA, is what also allows her to have this highly energetic belt sound. I'm pretty certain I've broken this down before, but it's been a while, so I'm just need to dive into this again because the variety of not just tones, so we have this first section, thin fold, uh, slightly lowered larynx, a little bit lighter in tone. I mean, she's still having a support under that because with thin folds you can quite easily use too much air and then that winds up blowing the folds apart and you wind up with something that's too breathy like there's just too much tension happening at the vocal fold level because you're trying so hard to get a high note that you wind up 
introducing more tension than you actually need in order to get to the pitch because, I mean, in order to get up there, your vocal folds have to lengthen, but if there's tension in that lengthening, they might not come together as easily. You wind up with breathiness in the sound. But she goes from that tone in the beginning to this speech-like setup here. So here I would say she's in more of a mix, but we definitely have more mass in that sound. And what I mean by that is she's borrowing some of the mass that you can produce by being lower down in your register, yes, but she's mixing it so that it's not too heavy. I would probably put her more in a first register sound, so we have that full fold contact, but because she's not absolutely gunning it on the mass side, she's not over squeezing, she's using a slightly lighter version of this first register, it allows her to be really, really speechy with like no hint of tension in her singing. And it's something where if you are a singer who likes to, I think other people refer to it as pulling chest. I personally refer to this as taking too much mass upwards or trying to carry too much mass up. This is how you would get around that. As you are moving up through your range, you want to make sure that there's enough twang there so that you have perceived volume and that you aren't squeezing or trying to keep it too heavy at the vocal fold level because it will hit a point where that TA muscle, the one that makes things shorter and fatter, might overpower that CT muscle that's trying to get you the length. But you need the length in order to have the pitch. So if they're fighting each other, you wind up with something that's really heavy and your chances of breaking that sound or having a sound that's not as reliable kind of goes up. So what Floor is doing here is something that I try to get a lot of singers to do, and that is to have enough twang and speech quality there that we're definitely in a contemporary setup, but not so heavy that we wind up not having as much flexibility. We can't vary our tones as much because we've locked too much into this mass heavy sound. She's in this great mix here, good speech quality to keep it contemporary. I've said it once and I'll say it again. I love Floor's voice as a vocal role model. She does so many things, which if you were to try and emulate that, it's really healthy singing a lot of the vocal choices that she makes. And when she does use effects that are a little bit on the less efficient side, she does them sparingly and she doesn't stay there for too long. Anyway, we are going to keep going. This is awesome. so well coordinated. Everything I just mentioned earlier about how her CT muscle, the one that lengthens the vocal folds, how well coordinated it is with her TA muscle in order to keep enough mass there. She just did an excellent example of what it's like to seed mass and wind up going into a completely different tone. So she started off in something that sounded a little bit more contemporary mix and leaned into something that is more of that modified classical. So larynx lowers slightly. We wind up widening in the pharynx just a touch more this is just such good singing every time floor. Oh my gosh.
love that belt. She, she feels flipping high. So she is going up to that F5. I mean, I've heard her do sustained belting before. It's not a shock to me that Flora is capable of these things, but she is so flipping consistent. So consistent. That's a testament to vocal health. It's also a testament to her habits outside of what she would be doing here as far as maintaining her instrument. I mean, challenging her stamina, perhaps things that she maybe integrates uh, into her own professional practice as an artist. She is so, so, so consistent. It doesn't sound like she's working for it. F5 is pretty flipping high. Okay. And yes, she is in a mixed dominant belt there. It is not a TA dominant belt. So remember I mentioned TA earlier, that one that creates mass. And if it's too heavy, we want it with a TA dominant sound. Um, she has done that amazing thing I mentioned earlier, where as she's gone up, she's gotten rid of a little bit of mass, but she's kept enough there that it sounds like it's a full flipping belt, not a top down belt from second register. It just, it sounds powerful and energetic. So it's hitting the marks for a belt of what I would like to hear when I'm hearing someone belt, but damn, so consistent. And yeah, that's just, I mean, I could go on a vocal health rant all day, every day, particularly surrounding belting because it is a high energy vocal technique. You can really hurt yourself if you are just trying to gun your sound as hard as you can. And depending on how long you're doing it, you can wind up with phonotrauma, which is where you get a little bit of swelling on the vocal folds. So this consistency, I love, I love hearing that because it's a consistently healthy belt. Not everyone's going to have the same range as floor, but let us absorb what we can from healthy vocal role models, please. <laughs> and of course she's using distortion in places as well. This to me sounds like something that would come from a little bit more compression in the pharynx. As we know, if we're not new to this channel, distortion is something that occurs above the vocal folds. And sometimes that compression within the larynx can cause other things within the vocal tract to suddenly also create their own little sound waves or noise within the sound that you're creating from the vocal folds. So. That's really cool to hear her using that and then switching it off again. We're going to keep going. I just love listening to good singers and I love listening to good music. The musical ideas to me have really gone on a journey here. We've like returned to this chorus, but within each of the verse structures where we're not really staying within the same place that we were in the beginning. We've got so much variety being expressed in the voice, yes, but also musically. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pop back into this with the uh, sustained D5 belt that Floor does, and then she winds up sliding out of it. Just the breath control. Oh, a little distortion too. Not sure if the distortion was from Floor or Marco, but we shall keep going. My goodness, what an ending. That was impeccable breath management with that slide there. I'll talk about Marco's vocals in a moment. D5 
damn. I don't necessarily want to keep repeating myself, but damn, <laughs> that's slight. I mean, just as a little aside note, I suppose one of the things that you get a client to do when you want to test range or if you just want to warm up is that kind of vocal maneuver, I guess you want to call it. I don't know. We call it a siren in my studio. I don't know if other studios also call it a siren, but it's basically where you glide from the bottom of your range all the way up to the top. And the thing you're aiming for is not to have like a break or a crack as you're sliding up. And if you can do that, that's usually a testament to your breath control, your management of your registration, because you are going typically from something that is full vocal folds moving together. And as you ascend, remember that CT muscle I mentioned earlier, the cricothyroid muscle, it's in charge of lengthening things. It allows you to go up in pitch as that engages and you're working with, you're coordinating with your TA rather, coordinating with the one that makes things short and fat in order to allow a smooth ascension through your range. That is usually a good indicator of what your coordination as a singer moving through your range with this sound can be like. It's also something that people will use as a vocal health check just to make sure that there's nothing missing or being interrupted. Like there's no moments of aphonia where something is like cutting in and out. You can also use this kind of siren sound to make sure that your entire range is still connected and efficient. The fact that I just heard it used effectively within performance is amazing. One of the things that I would love to also speak to is how almost rap-like the amount of speech quality in Marco's vocals made him sound and he's got this great distortion in his vocal delivery and it just adds to this intensity within the song and the music and of course we've been on a musical journey this time as well we've gone into something that is new we've got a new musical idea and the energy that they're introducing not just with their vocal choices but also rhythmically what they're doing with their sound Marco being super speechy and Floor introducing elements of almost like a staccato feeling into her phrasing just again, the breath management to handle these things. And then she switches on this distortion and then goes back up into this really pingy, ringy belt that's just ace. <laughs> yeah, God. Amazing intensity from him vocally there. And that's all first register. So he's got a lot of mass in that sound. It's all in this first register, vocal folds vibrating top to bottom, complete fold closure in this section, which would make sense because he sounds so speechy. I would definitely put him in, in first slash modal register for this particular sound. It's got this impact in his phrasing delivery, this accent, this intensity into different parts of his phrase so that we feel this continual rhythmic build. This is what I'm kind of talking about. It's not just the tone. It's not just the distortion. It's where they're placing emphasis and how they're navigating the bits of the phrase they want to hit harder. This is more along the lines of musicianship rather than just vocal choices. So let's let's listen to that again. We hear that. Yes, she is not connecting all the way through that. We've got an accent on every single word. Little distortion into that bell. I feel like <laughs> it's almost like you get tricked thinking floor's not going to go higher because Marco winds up range wise. He's navigating mostly his first register. He's not changing registration there, at least from what I can hear. But then floor is sliding up. I feel like I feel like we're in sixth octave just from where that is hitting. So speechy. This ah, she's coming down. I almost feel like this fry from Marco as well. I'd have to re-listen to it. Yeah, so we're up on that D6. Just the range is amazing. 
as she's going up, the, the tone doesn't strike me as a whistle register. So I do feel like she has taken her second register all the way up to that D6, which means vocal fold wise, CT muscle has engaged. We are lengthening those vocal folds so that they're very long and thin and also tight. They're tighter. They're longer and thinner and tighter, but she has got a beautiful tone on that. There doesn't sound like there's any tension in it at all, but I mean, even when there is tension in Flaw's voice, it's very much an intentional tension and it's to create things like distortion, like intensity in her vocal delivery so that there's more storytelling to her phrasing. Her coordination of her instrument and her storytelling is just amazing. And of course you have Marco supporting harmonized sections in there as well. He mostly stayed in first register, but their consistency together is also exactly what you would expect from professional performance. So yet again, another wonderful experience with Nightwish as a group, Floor and Marco as vocalist. But yeah, I mean, how many things do you want? You've got range, you've got, <laughs> you've got storytelling, you've got intensity, you've got like musical progression, you've got kind of everything. So, I mean, I'm musically and vocally very satisfied having watched this. So thank you, Nightwish. Thank you people for suggesting this song to me. But yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave that one today. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, click the subscribe button and the bell notification beside it for more just like this one. As usual, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you are staying healthy and I will see you next time. Bye. It's like hidden under my, hidden under my table one moment.